right, so we're going to start with a six minute warm up. We want to gradually increase the intensity either before the warm up or right after. I suggest you move all the joints in your body. So, you know, roll your head a little bit, move your arms, move your hands, do a little standing on your toes. And you're good to go with the next exercise. Awesome. Let's get to it. Let's do it. All right, so Kirby, we're gonna warm up a little bit more. We're gonna do the Charleston, and that's gonna warm up our hips a little bit more. So we're gonna do like this. So we're moving our hips and our hands, and that's a little bit of a coordination move if you move your hands in front one time and back the next time. So when we're skiing, we're using movements in our upper body and lower body that are a little different, so we're practicing that. And then we're good to go on the hips. Awesome. Activating those hips. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to do some side bends with resistance. We do this because in skiing, you're in this position as you turn. And you need a little bit of strength and coordination over here. You need to stretch over there. We're going to do this on a foam pad so that we practice a little bit of feeling in our feet while we're doing something else with our upper body. In skiing, you're always doing one thing with your lower body and another thing with your upper body. So it's a pretty simple movement, but it's use some resistance here. You could use a dumbbell if you want. And this is really just helping us connect kind of the lower and the upper half of the body as well. That's exactly right. All right, so now we're gonna stand on one foot and rotate our hips like we did in phase one. But here in phase two, we're going to elevate our hip first. This makes it a little bit harder, and it's a little bit more like skiing, where your upper body and lower body are in two different planes. So we're gonna stand up on one leg, and then we're gonna elevate our hip up. And then we're gonna rotate around our femur, around our leg. A little more of a challenge. Definitely looks more challenging. I'm gonna keep that hip elevated and go back and forth. You're gonna feel it down in your feet and your calves a little bit more too as you're balancing. There we go. We told them once, we're gonna tell them twice. Balance is key. Absolutely. All right, so Kirby, now we're gonna do some push-ups. Of course, everyone knows how to do push-ups. We're gonna do them on a foam pad just to have a little bit of instability to train our brains to, to work with some instability and to work some stabilizer muscles a little bit. And this relates to skiing because when you're pulling to get up to the ski lift, you're gonna use some upper body strength. So we're gonna do push-ups on the foam pad, pretty straightforward. All right, so now we're gonna do rowing. We're gonna stand on a foam pad again. It's gonna look like this. And how does this relate to skiing, Steve? Yeah, so when you're pulling, you're using some of these rowing muscles to push yourself along with your ski poles. We also wanna keep our body in harmony. We want the front and the back muscles to be about the same strength. So we just did push-ups. now we do rowing to keep things in balance. We're on the foam pad here, and so we're getting a little bit of instability and we're feeling our feet at the same time we're moving our upper body. Makes perfect sense, can't wait to try it. Yeah, here you go. In phase two, we're gonna do split squats with an additional challenge. So now we're gonna think about keeping about 60% of our weight on the balls of our feet. So just behind your toes are pads and we want about 60% of our weight on our front foot on those pads, up and down. We wanna pause at the bottom of the split squat. Now, if you want more of a challenge and you feel like your knees are, are doing well, then you can put a little more pressure on, say, the pad behind your big toe or the pad behind your little toe. So you can go, kinda of go back and forth a little bit if you want. If you don't feel comfortable with that, just keep that weight on the balls of your feet evenly. Here's the way it looks. Get lined up here. Feeling comfortable. Hands in a good ski position as always. 
pause at the bottom, come up, subtle, but I've got about 60% of my weight on the balls of my feet. And now I'm gonna put more weight on the, on the ball of my foot right behind my big toe. So and you're I'm, shifting your weight right now. I'm shifting my weight laterally slightly. And now I'm gonna shift it laterally slightly to the left. And now I feel a little more pressure over my little toe. Up and down, up and down. And we're gonna pause at the bottom, come back up. There's no rush, we're not in a big hurry. It makes it a little bit harder if you pause at the bottom. But when you're skiing, you're pausing in this position as you're going through a turn. So we're practicing that. Can't wait to fly down the slopes. There we go. All right, now we're gonna do some leg extensions to work our core. And the variation here is we're gonna hold this softball between our feet. And the reason we're gonna do that is when you're skiing, you have to control where your leg is in space. And part of that is these inside muscles here that control where your leg goes. So when we lay down and put this between our feet, we're holding the ball here. It takes some coordination of these inside muscles. Here's the way it looks. Now we're also gonna work our core. You can feel it in your quads a little bit too. So it looks like this. So we want a stable core while we're doing other things with our, with our legs. So we're keeping our back flat on the floor. I have a feeling this is a little harder than it looks too. It probably is if you haven't done it before. Let's give it a try. All right. Now we're gonna do a one-legged deadlift and we're gonna move our arms around a little bit. So we're working our balance again. We're challenging our balance because we're moving our upper body this way. And we're also gonna move our hands a little bit. So we practice balancing, doing one thing with our legs and our balance and another thing with our hands. So here's the way it looks. Stand on one foot, we go forward and do a touch motion. You can touch with the other hand, which challenges your balance in a little bit different way. We can kind of do some things like this. So we can have a little bit of fun with this and work on your balance and your coordination at the same time. Looking forward to giving it a try. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now we're gonna do a one arm press overhead while we're standing on a foam pad. So it looks like this. Now we're just doing one arm at a time. So we're working our stabilizer muscles. At the same time, we're working our shoulder. That's because when we're skiing, we're also using our stabilizer muscles. Now we're working our shoulder because that's going to help us keep our hands in a good ski position while we're skiing. That's great for balance, also looks good. If you have your hands down here, it doesn't help you with balance, also doesn't look good. When you look good, you feel good. Absolutely. Now we're gonna do curls, and we're doing curls, which everybody's probably done before. We're doing these because we just did overhead presses. So we wanna keep our arm muscles in harmony, we're working the front of our arms because we just walk, worked the back of our arms. Now in terms of how this relates to skiing, the curls really don't. But you're on a foam pad, and it gives you a little bit of instability. And so I want you to think about being in perfect balance on this foam pad while you're doing the curls. Or if you want to make it a little more difficult, you can lean forward a little bit on your, on your feet while you're doing some curls. You can go back a little bit. So even See, though what? this one isn't super specific to skiing, we still want to create that harmony from top to bottom in the body. That's right. That's right. All right, now we're going to work on our balance and on this inside muscle in our leg here. It's called the adductor. So when you're skiing and you're turning, your weight will be on your outside ski, and you'll want to bring that inside ski in frequently. So you have to use these muscles in here to do that. And you also have to balance. I have the band anchored over here in the door jam. There's two bands looped together, so I can get over to here. So I'm going to stand on one leg, and then we're going to squeeze together. So we're turning, we're bringing that inside ski in. Always hands in a good ski position. If you want to get fancy, go up like this. Awesome. Okay, 
now we're going to do foot edging again, like we did in phase one. Now remember in phase one, we just went back and forth on both feet. Yes. And that's pretty easy. We were just mainly watching our coordination and keeping our shins and knees parallel. Now we're going to up the ante in phase two, and now we're going to do it just on one foot. And we're going to do controlled edging back and forth. So we're going to raise this foot up, we're going to balance, and we're going to go back and forth in a controlled manner. We've been telling them, we're going to keep telling them, balance is key, right, Steve? This is all about balance and controlling your balance on different parts of your foot. Awesome. And of course, we'll do the other foot next as well. Can't wait to give it a try. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to do balance one more time. This will be the hardest balance exercise of the day. And we're going to balance on one foot on the foam pad here. So we're going to get our hands in a good, good ski position, and then we're going to balance on one foot. Now, if your ankle wobbles a little bit, that's okay. That's part of balancing. When you're skiing, you're typically on one ski most of the time. When you're turning, you're on your outside ski, and that's where you're balancing. So if you're turning to the right, you're balancing on this leg here on one foot mainly. With all this balance work you got me doing today, Steve, I know I'm going to have so much fun on the slopes. Absolutely. These exercises are kind of fun, too. It's, it's not so boring when you're having to work on balance at the same time. I agree. All right, now we're going to do some fit ball leg curls. We're doing these because we're going to work our hamstrings a little more aggressively to keep them in harmony with the quads that we worked a lot on today. And the twist is, in addition to curling our legs up, we're also going to curl our feet up like this. And the reason we do that is when you're skiing, you tend to get in the back seat at the end of a turn, or the terrain may throw you a little bit, and you get your weight too far back. And the way you get your feet and your weight back to the front where it belongs is you use your hamstrings and this motion with your feet. So we're going to practice doing that at the same time. Now we're on, when we're on the slopes, if we get in the back seat, we know, oh, it's just that fit ball leg curl thing that I do. And it's, it's an instantaneous thought. You don't have to think about it. It's already there. You've already practiced it. So we're building a lot of this muscle memory. Is that what I'm hearing? Exactly. We're building muscle memory to get out of the back seat and in the front seat where you belong. Here's how it looks. Get our feet up on the ball, point our toes out, bring our toes in. Point out. Bring our feet in. Toes out, feet up. Toes out, feet up. And we're also working our core a little bit here too, which is always a good thing. Well, Steve, let's get into that front seat, baby. Absolutely, it's where you belong. <laughs> 